one more story that I wanted to get to is something that actually broke broke on uh, Twitter last night. Uh, this was really interesting to me, especially because this project was announced like in 2019, I think at Comic-Con or D23 or something like that. Um, this project was announced so long ago. There hasn't been any updates on it since. And now the first update that we do get is that the director of Marvel's Blade, the remake they're working on with Blade, starring Mahershala Ali, uh, the director has exited the project. So uh, now this film is director-less, um, and, and that just kind of adds to the upheaval that Marvel has been experiencing lately and continues to experience with this latest development. I'll also throw this tweet up on screen from the same source by the way this has been confirmed by hollywood reporters it's not just some rumor this is actually legitimate um this uh this source jeff snyder says i'm told that the current blade script is roughly 90 pages and features exactly two lackluster action sequences mahershala ali is said to be very frustrated with the process kevin feige is said to be spread too thin but hey, that's just what sources are telling me. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff here. Obviously, the most interesting thing is just that Blade lost their director. Um, and, and it seems like the director that was attached was kind of an inexperienced amateur. He had made like one indie movie that wasn't an action movie. It wasn't a superhero movie. It was like some movie about like the underground hip hop scene or something like that. So like not necessarily the kind of person you might want to put at the helm of like a massive, you know, multi-million dollar action extravaganza. I'm sure he could have done a great job, but like, again, I, I would put someone behind that camera that has a little bit more experience with that genre of film, uh, not just some like random indie guy, but who knows, maybe he could have done a good job. Anyway, uh, that being said, so that's interesting off the bat. I I'm excited to see who they replace him with, um, whether or not it's going to be someone with an equal amount of experience or more of an industry veteran, who knows, someone that's worked on other Marvel movies, again, who knows. Um, but also, I think even more interesting about this is the fact that uh, it says Kevin Feige is spread way too thin and and yeah i think that's actually pretty obvious to anyone that's been paying any attention to the mcu lately because kevin feige had uh, like 100 percent creative control on the early stages of the mcu they really let him do his thing and that's why those movies were so successful not my favorite movies i've never been a huge fan of the mcu uh, but if you look at the consistency of the first few phases of the mcu compared to where they are now i think it's very obvious that uh kevin feige has kind of checked out partially because they've taken away a lot of his creative control the new regime at disney has kind of robbed him of his ability to have that intimate creative control on these projects and that you know they're making the decisions now instead of him he just has like some level of input but not as much um and, and there's just so much shit going on now, you know, instead of it just being like four or five characters that, you know, they're trying to focus on now, there's like hundreds and hundreds of new superheroes and it's spiraling out of control without any direction in sight. Um, so I think this is just very indicative of the state of affairs over at Disney Marvel and the way that they're kind of uh, screwing up the phase four and phase five of the MCU, which uh, only a couple of years ago would have seemed unthinkable. You know, th they were on top of the world. That's all anyone cared about. Like when a new MCU movie came out, it was a freaking event. And now it just seems like these movies are always mired in behind the scenes controversy. And then when they do come out, they're not particularly well received seems like a lot of them are receiving diminishing returns as far as critical uh, acclaim and as far as box office results and it looks like blade is going to be the latest in that trend unless they really get their shit together which seems unlikely again given the fact that they've been working on the movie since 2019 um so yeah it's definitely interesting to see uh, all this mayhem going on behind the scenes with what should be something that's a priority creatively in blade uh, but apparently not and even mahershala ali who went out of his way to call disney and, and basically like beg them to give him this role even he's frustrated with it uh and again he's kind of the one been spearheading the project from the beginning so not a good sign yeah look i i can't say i haven't been like you know doing dances in the hopes that marvel will just eat itself like the beast that it is uh you know so i'm i mean look uh blade you know it might just be like a like a casualty of that fucking implosion that i've been hoping for so badly because like uh they clearly they we've gotten to the point where they can't just serve people all kinds of slop it has to be slop that has their like favorite superhero in it and they've run out of the people's favorite superheroes so now it's just slop that says marvel on it and you're like is this guy even part of marvel and you're like yeah, yeah he is and like mm. 
only the diehards who like get off on the fact that being like, I know this guy from this one. Like those are the people that still give a fuck about this. It's like, that's your whole identity. It's, you know, being a Marvel fan and that's fine. That's a, that's a priority for some people. So uh, I think there's only a few ways that they could save this. Right. Obviously, <laughs> Calling the big guns, get Del Toro on the phone. Say, hey man, we got an offer for you. Hey man, you want a big ass budget? You want to come? And this is probably no. Okay, so where do you go from there? I doubt Del Toro wants to. Yeah, you know, hey man, do you want a ginormous shit sandwich that'll probably end terribly? Like probably not at this stage in his career. But the one person I was thinking who could maybe come in here and obviously fucking find out if this guy's occupied uh, or busy uh, is that guy Chad Stahelski. He directed all of the John Wick movies, and he was the guy that did the choreographing, the fight scenes for all three of the original Matrix, and then he didn't come back for the new one, and the fight scenes weren't as good. John Wick still has amazing fight scenes, so I feel like if that guy's directing it, and then you know he collaborates with like a real you know samurai choreographing expert you could really tell an interesting story because that guy has no problem shooting action scenes you know you trim down some of the bullshit that's in those 90 pages uh that's like character development because they couldn't fucking figure i mean it makes total sense when you read that this guy came from independent filmmaking because he just knows how to write dialogue he doesn't know how to write fucking um you know action scenes you bring in a guy that knows how to write dialogue for action scenes and you've really got a marriage here um so that could be that could be an option um, as well. Um, yeah, that's just like the one thing that I could think is like maybe the, their path to success on here. Obviously, what they'll probably do is they'll just pawn it off to some other schlup uh, who wants a big break for Disney. And then they'll you know, this movie will shit the bed and they'll be like, sorry, man, we gave you your opportunity. Like, good luck in the future. You got to direct one blockbuster and you fucked it up. So good luck getting another job. So, uh, yeah, I don't know.